Hello, today BlockFi files bankruptcy. Welcome to Crypto Mastery Class. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and we've got Joe on the line. We're here to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're going to look at the news, the overall market, some hot movers in our basket, the indicators, and most importantly, your question and answers. And Joe's the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators, so get ready. Quick disclaimer, this is an opinion expressed here. It's not investment advice. It's provided for informational purposes only. Today is, well, this week is week 48 of 2022. And here's the news. BlockFi files for bankruptcy as FTX contagion grips crypto markets by Alison Morrow on CNN.com. So crypto lender BlockFi filed for bankruptcy Monday becoming the latest casualty of the financial contagion unleashed by the collapse of Sam Bakeman Freed's empire. BlockFi announced earlier this month that it had halted withdrawals, citing significant exposure to Bankman Freed's FTX exchange, as well as its sister hedge fund, Almeida. FTX, Alameda, and dozens of affiliates filed for bankruptcy on November the 11th. Since the pause, our team has explored every strategic option and alternative available to us and has remained laser focused on our primary objective of doing the best we can for our clients, the company said in a statement. BlockFi has about $257 million in cash on hand and the company expects that will provide sufficient liquidity to support it during restructuring. The company estimates it has between 1 billion and 10 billion in assets and liabilities according to the filing. Part of that restructuring will include layoffs. It wasn't immediately clear how many employees would be let go, but the company said it had initiated an internal plan to considerably reduce expenses, including labor costs. A representative from BlockFi didn't immediately respond to request for comments and staffing, for comments on staffing. The New Jersey-based company was one of several that received financial support from Bankman Freed over the summer, as falling crypto prices threatened to take down key players in the digital asset ecosystem. In July, BlockFi secured a $400 million financial lifeline from FTX. The fallout from FTX's decline is ricketing throughout the crypto industry. So with that being said, this is why technology is so important to have and also to stay up to, up to par with the news and what's going on. And I put a wallet on the lower right hand corner of the slide so that you know that one of the key elements here is to keep your crypto in a wallet and safety first. So when you're working in this environment and you're managing your own portfolio, you need to understand the risks that you're going to come up against. And if you choose to leave your money on an exchange because you are swing trading, just always have an entry and exit plan and I would say make certain that you're able to get out fast when you need to. All right, so let's look at the overall market. There's some exciting things happening for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we are at a market cap right now of overall crypto, $834 billion. For the last seven days, it fluctuated $34 billion. You can see back on the left-hand side of the chart that it went down as low as 800 billion and now we're at 834 billion you can find this on coinmarketcap.com and just click on that blue lettering that's right next to the market cap so now for my visual learners we have coin 360 this is a great thing it's called the heat map and this is the seven day heat map in market cap block size so you can see Bitcoin is still the dominant coin out there at 37% dominance. That means all of money in crypto land out of that 37% is still invested in Bitcoin. Bitcoin for the last seven days went up 3.77%. Ethereum 
for a whopping $16,360 per Bitcoin right now. Ethereum went up 9% in the last seven days, and it's sitting at $1,206 at the time of taking the slide. Now look a little bit down. So these colors mean something. The dark green means that it went up three stages in price wise. So when you're looking to take profit, look for your dark green. And the dark, dark red means it went down three, three price ranges down from where it was. So if you want to buy, if I'm buying, I look for the red because I want to get what's on sale. So chills in the upper right hand corner or FTT, those are dark red. So I would zone in on something like that if I'm in the acquisition mode. All right, no, if I'm in the take profit mode and I, I jumped in on something seven days ago, BNB, Binance Coin, went up 17.73%. Doge went up 34.96%. And Litecoin, it looks like 22%. So those dark greens are great for when you want to cash in and get in the money, honey. All right, so then we have AVAX, Sol, Ethereum Classic, Stellar Lumens, XMR. Uh, Stellar Lumens is, is a light green, but the light green means it's the first step up. You can see Ethereum is the medium green, so second stage up, and Bitcoin is starting to turn as of the seven days. And you have link in the upper right-hand corner under the Ethereum tokens, ApeCoin, HT, and GRT, which are in the dark green. So we can zone in on those charts. If you guys are here, you can always type in the questions box and tell us what coins are in your portfolio right now so we can take a quick snap shot and look at those charts and read them for you. So we're gonna review the indicators or actually use them to look at the Ethereum and the Bitcoin one week charts. So if you wanna scoop these up, you can go to cryptomastery.online and you can subscribe to those indicators now. So here's Bitcoin USD, a one week chart with the crypto mastery indicators. So you can see on the upper area, you have the early reversal. That's going to come in and this is a one week. So just know that these candlesticks represent one week of movement. So you can see weeks ago, back in May, the early reversal came in saying that Ethereum was going to go down and it continued to go down. The average true range popped up as in a downward air zone in the beginning of 2022 and it's continued to go down in that direction it has not flipped for the one week average yet the trend indicator looks like it is still going down we had some some fight it looks like ethereum was putting up a fight back a few weeks ago saying it's going to go up and it did just temporarily and then it's just not it's not stayed in a steady upward swing for weeks. The trend strength is still in the downward spiral. Well, I guess trajectory, I wouldn't say spiral here with this chart. So the trend strength is popping up another green arrow for last week, saying it is still in the downward range. If you take your eye to the radar, that stands for 60 is one hour, 240 is four hours, the D is for the day, and the W is for the week. So it's still going down on those averages. The signal line is green, but it is sideways. You can see there's not a separation between the red, the, the red line. I mean, there is no red line in this one between the gold line and the green line. It is almost like flatlining. So that is a good sign that it is green, but there's just not enough math to take those signal lines and separate them. So it that's not a real good reassurance that we've definitely um, hit the bottom and we are definitely not in a upward long-term momentum at the at the moment all right and then the volatility index is in an amazing place it is 2.38 that means it is absolutely oversold and for someone in the acquisition mode that loves to buy low and sell high it's a really good number to have. I mean, the lowest you can go is zero. So 20 is that thick red line on the bottom. And when it goes below that, that's considered in the oversold zone. It's also reflected that in, when you're in the oversold zone in the volatility index, it goes red, that line goes red. But I want you to take your eyes up to the top of the Bitcoin chart here. And you see how those candlesticks in the early reversal and average true range area are red. 
that's reflecting the redness of the volatility index. You can see back in November of, 20, of 2021 in the volatility index where it went up to the green zone and follow your eyes all the way up to the top chart of the early reversal on average tree range and you could see that those candlesticks changed to green and that's because you were in the overbought zone and that zone is 80 to 100 so that's when you get close to a ceiling so all in all what this chart is telling me is that bitcoin is very much on a floor and the the most important part is that we catch it before it goes back to a ceiling you know bitcoin has been along uh, around for a long time it's had many fluctuations and if you've been in this for some time you know what is coming you know that you know things don't stay on the floor forever so it's just a matter of when is it going to flip and you know it's just will you have enough to make a significant wealth change in your life once it does flip all right so at this point though all the math the quant that you're you you're you're looking at here are saying that on a one week average it's not flipping yet so depending on what kind of a trader you are and your trading personality and your financial situation and if you have the stamina to withstand waves in your portfolio and your balances that's where you have to make that conscious personal decision as to is this the right time for you to slowly scale in okay but i will tell you to keep your eyes on that volatility index is a very very absolutely amazing place to be in right now i cannot tell you though that if you buy right now it's not going to go down anymore but i'm just saying that that volatility index is very exciting for someone in acquisition mode but the other signals here are not saying we're moving up right now on a one week average okay so you have to take them all into consideration when making a really good sound decision for your own portfolio so now next we have ethereum the queen of crypto i call it we have this is the usd you're using usd to buy ethereum one week chart and this is on coinbase and then you have the crypto mastery indicators applied also. So on the top area, you see the early reversal came in, one, two, three, four, five, six, like about eight weeks ago. It slightly went up. Those blue lines in the middle, those are Keltner bands, and they're really good to have identifiable stop points almost, or, or almost like goalposts. So typically when a coin is going to move up, my expectations are only going to say, okay, if it's if it's below that bottom Keltner band, there's three of them, by the way, it's going to most likely, if it's below, it's going to go to that first band first. And then if the momentum is still there, it'll go to the second band. And if there's still upward momentum, it'll go to the third. And if it passes that third one, then that's a scary zone for acquisition people, because if it passes that third band, it's most likely hitting a, a shorter term ceiling. So that's one of those times when you know, I would personally probably take some profit, right? So the, the wonderful part about this Ethereum chart is, and I told you guys, there's good news in this, is that we're below, below the Keltner band, you know, we're right on that very bottom. So one of those stages, again, if you're in acquisition mode, it's good. If you follow the indicators and you had jumped out when you had, when you had these signs of things are going down, this is for longer term traders, okay? Because we are looking at one week charts. So what I'm talking to you about right now is mostly focused towards people that are more long-term traders and not intraday traders, because that's a whole nother ball game. And we can get in on that in a second when we're looking at the live charts. The next arrow, so I'm going to make sure you guys see this. The early reversal came in, but then it did follow suit. You can see that the indicators went right back up to that from the bottom counter band to that second counter band. And then it did exactly what typically happens. That band went and stood as a ceiling. It didn't break past that point. Isn't that amazing how this technology, it's just like these indicators are so real. They're so right. And it went to that top, that middle Keltner band and went right back down to the bottom. So 
it happens. And, and that's what you've got to get ready for when you're jumping in on trading. So the other part of this whole indicator on the top zone, the average true range, you see the red, almost like, I want to call it a boxing, but it's not a boxing. It's an ever flowing line. But that is saying that it came in um, in the beginning of 2022, just like Bitcoin. These two follow suit, Ethereum and Bitcoin. They're very similar, very similar. So the average true range went in a downward direction and it hasn't changed. In order for that direction to change into an upward momentum, it's going to turn green. But if you look on the right hand side of that top or top uh, indicator area, you'll see the highlighted red line that stands for that average true range. So it's 19,000, what? One thousand. I'm sorry, we're, we're in Ethereum. One thousand nine hundred sixty-eight dollars and fifty-seven cents. When Ethereum passes that range, then that's when the average true range will switch to green. So we have a good way to go to get to that point. All right, so there's still a long, a long ways for that indicator to kick in to an upward trajectory. So let's go down to the next set of indicators. So then we have on the second section, we have the trend and the radar. So the trend line, it's red. I know you can't really see a lot of red, but it's red. And there was a progression of some upward movement, but it, it didn't excel, didn't go beyond where it was. And then you can see that it, it's it's red low. So it, it's it's trend is, I would say, it's not printing numbers. And the line went from green to red. So we're still in a downward trajectory for the one week in the trend. Now, next to that trend area, you have the radar. So the one hour average is down. For the four hour average, it's up. For the day, it's down. The week, it's down. Now you have the trend strength indicator. That is red the red arrow came in and that's a very strong indicator it's somewhat sim it's really in sync with the early reversal and you can kind of see like when that early reversal came in on the upper area if you take your eyes and follow that same line down at that point the trend was coming the trend line came in the trend strength came in the signal line showed a little pump and the volatility index went up so it's amazing that these are all in sync and the moment when I say, oh, I don't want to follow technology, it's just like game over. So I highly recommend you stick with your technology because it, it's doing math beyond our mind math. All right. So signal line you have on this. It's it's, it's green. So that's some positive there, but it's tight. And what typically happens when that green and that gold line get so close, it's ready to change direction at any time. So we'll see where that follows through. And then you have the volatility index. You know, Ethereum is it's holding its weight above Bitcoin in volatility. Ethereum's at an 8.95, where we saw earlier Bitcoin was down in the twos. So uh, both of these are in great volatility zones for acquisition. It's just that same scenario as Bitcoin. If you buy it, it doesn't mean it's not going to go down anymore, but depending on your stamina and you know how long you're projecting to own this and what your faith is in in this product and you know when you how long you have to take profit that's that's what i would say you know so it's not one of those things where you want to bet your whole house on this it's just keep your eyes on the indicators get your alerts set all right so let's get oops oh no let's go to the next slide sorry guys didn't mean to go that far okay so the basket. So in our crypto mastery basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So here's our crypto mastery basket in our trading view accounts with our watch list. So last week we created a watch list. So I wanted you guys to be able to see this too real time. So Right now we have Phantom that's up 6%, Ethereum USD is up 3%, and these are more short time terms, all right, like intraday times. Uh, Litecoin 2.75, Atom's up 2.19, Link is up 2%, Bitcoin's only up 1%, Algo, Sol, Solana, Harmony, and Cardano are are up a fraction of a 1%. On the watch list we have Matic, Litecoin, Curve. Um, 
I want to just tell you guys this, mostly on our watch list, I know I'm bouncing around here, is we were really working with pairs. So what we're doing is we're seeing that Bitcoin was going down and Ethereum is going down and we we're looking to see, well, where's the money going to? And people necessarily aren't selling their Bitcoin for USD, but they are taking their Bitcoin and buying Litecoin or they were taking their Bitcoin and buying CRV or Link or Matic or EOS. So that's what I look forward to getting into today live. So next is we're going to just quickly look at the crypto screener. This is on TradingView and this is actually filtered by the one week charts. I wanted to long a uh, more of a longer term perspective here. It's filtered by Coinbase and then in the search zone I typed USD. So I wanted to look for the coins that were being purchased with USD. But when you put that in there, because Tether is USDT, that comes in too. So you have a combination on this one of strong buys with US purchasing coins with USD and USDT. So we'll jump into these charts live in a moment and use the Crypto Master indicators to see what's going on with them on a technical basis. So Gemini dollar looks like it's showing a strong buy, uh, which is most likely a stable coin. So we'll check that one out. Uh, tether, being using your Tether to buy Nest Protocol is saying a strong buy. And then DeFi Yield Protocol is saying, this is trading views technical rating, okay? It's not financial advice. And uh, those are pretty much the only strong buys. So DeFi Yield, Nest Protocol, and Gemini Dollar, which is probably a stable coin. So we'll look at those charts live. And then you have Chrono Tech, Chainlink, Alchemy, Aurora, Oki Protocol, and MXC. So all of these are on Coinbase. So let's jump in and look at those charts. So we're going to use the Crypto Mastery Online indicators now. So subscribe to that above URL so you can use those too. And we're going to bring Joe on the line, look at some charts. And oh, I wanted to show you guys the crypto bubbles too. So this is cryptobubbles.net. It's pretty fun for another area for my visual learners to see. This is market cap and one week charts. So you can see Phantom went up 25%. You can see where the bubbles are big. Let's just jump back to those charts. So Hey, Joe, how are you doing? And love to bring you guys on for some questions and answers if you have any questions. Hi, Susie. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hey. So, so Joe, do you want to, what do you want to jump in on today? We got anything you want to comment on the news? Yeah, well, I mean, I just think we're seeing uh, increased uh, volatility uh, with coming in here to the uh, end of the year. And there's going to be a lot of uh, different institutions, hedge funds, money managers, unwinding positions. So I suspect in here that we're going to see the volatility start to increase as the year starts to come to the end. And uh, we have, I believe, one more Fed meeting coming up in a couple of weeks, which is going to be very important. But one of the things in particular, when we come into the end of each month, we always start to get repositioning. And the end of the month uh, just so happens to be in a couple of days. So let's just uh, take a look at one of the markets that's one of our, our big movers. I, I just kind of wanted to start with this because this is like actually one of the biggest uh, gainers. Now, for anyone new following along, um, Susie, if you go over there to the crypto pair screener, right? Oh, yep. I, I just want to just show how, you know, we utilize uh, this trading view. And, and th this is generic information, like when you're seeing technical ratings. Uh, but we're able to take that information and validate that with the technology. And also, we're able to uh, track money flow. So, um, in particular, what I'm looking for, right, if you double click the uh, technical rating and you, 
you scroll all the way up there to the top. Okay. I'm looking for uh what what pair LTC. do you want me to put in here? Do you want me to do BTC or Ethereum? Well, I believe it was LTC ETH. Okay. Or Okay, I'll just do LTC. E. Well, actually, you know, let's start off here, right? This is a better one, right? Which is okay. If you type in there, uh, USD DC. DC. No, uh, you got a space in there. Oh, you're saying you're purchasing it with USDC with the stable yeah. coin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just want to just show how I utilize this with the technology. Like one of the things in particular right here, if you see here uh USDC Euro, that coin, if you click that. Okay. Do you want me to be limited to Coinbase on this? Yes. Okay. So um, if you put in there just a half the screener, I just wanted to just show how we validate. So it, so if you take a look in here, what the crypto pair screener shows is showing the technical rating as itself. Okay. But when we take a look in here, that, that information versus what's happening on the chart. So if you maximize the chart, Okay. Okay. What we're showing in here is, is that we had an ERI print the other day, which is an early reverse indicator. And that's what's going to happen. That's why it's the ERI, because it's going to give you early warning. And when that ERI printed, we also had a new number one print with the trend indicator. Now, if we were to take a look at this chart in particular, we'll notice that the volatility index is oversold down at the 20 so we want to have a check there and we have the signal line where it's crossed and it's trending up so that's another check and now we're on the second dot on the tsi which is great because that's confirming the uptrend or the up movement that we're getting in the market so these are uh this is one of the coins that coinbase office offers offers this is not in our basket but this is uh, a way that I can show you of how we're able to validate the information and also show the value of the tools that we have, whereas that there's going to be different case points where you'll see the market moving higher and our tools being reactive to what the market is doing so that you can take action. Um, and you also see the latency from when this market actually does say that it's a buy on their generic information. So with our tools, we help position you faster, you're able to validate, and in addition to that, um, you know, you're able to set alerts and scale into different positioning. So this one here is uh, one in here which has a good chance that it can test the uh, ATR, Susie. So if you look at that horizontal line, if you draw that on the ATR, um, just put a horizontal line there. Uh, that would be in there probably my level of what I may be potentially looking for from the end of this, uh, from this move right here, for it to come up and test the ATR. Um, I don't know if, it, if it's going to break it, but it's still extra, it's just still a few hundred points away, so there's still some potential opportunity on here. All right. Oh, I might have surprised so you. I with had that, one. <laughs> that that crypto pairs at one week. Do you want me to do it with one week or one day? Just keep it at one day. Okay. Okay. So um, now that we got that, let's go to another market here. 
All right. And uh, this is trying to find something right in the midst of uh, <clears throat> maybe turning. About this one. Look at look at the Bitcoin. Well, the early reversal is not coming in yet, but. So if you're following along with us and you have the tools, if there's a coin in particular that maybe you may have come across, we're looking for the setups with the ERI. And sometimes there's just not going to be too much. I mean, I notice that sometimes this Coinbase there's a lot of similarity in here and really um this is when it seems like the key coin is the better exchange because it has better setups in different markets so i'll just do this we'll filter and we'll say coinbase and q coin okay yeah because on the key the key coin i have this market which is called un I K C S. So you're buying it with KCS? Yeah, just type, uh, hold on a second. You're uh, UN. Here it is, right there. No, no, the, the first letter is U. U E N. I'm using the crypto screener oh. to find it. Okay. Just to, to demo it. And if you yeah. want, I'll add this to our watch list because we were starting this last week. So, Uniswap. So, it's utilizing the Q coin token to buy Uniswap. Nice one, Joe. Yeah. So, this is another a case point where we got the ERI. Right now, in this case point, that volatility index is, you know, midway. So you don't really have a direction with the volatility index. But what you are waiting for is you're waiting for that signal line cross, which hasn't happened yet. Right. We got the first dot on the TSI the day after the ERI. And we're also waiting in here for the uh, bell alert on the trend indicator. So, yeah, that's what I need you to type in, Susie. Type that in on those two. It just so happens the radar is all green and it looks really mean. <laughs> green and lean. That's how I like it. That's awesome. So this is an example where right now, um, for anyone that's on the KeyCoin exchange, you guys, um, this is a really, um, really good. Yeah, the only thing is that, look at that, it hit right to the top of that Keltner. So if it keeps growing, it's got to go past that. And so you want to make, I mean, that's the next challenge, right, Joe, is to pass that top bar. But the good thing is that the average true range switched back here on Friday the 4th of November. Yeah, well, you see that high, right, right before the ERI sell came in? And that's what's good about it because you can use the ERI on both sides of the market. But that high that came in right before she came down, it looks – to me, like when I see that chart, if you go back to that first chart, Susie. Uh, you want to go back to this one? Yeah. I just wanted to say when I see that, I see a bullish pennant. It's called like a wedge. And it's basically in there is that, you know, uh, you know how a flag looks like a pennant flag for like yeah. the Phillies? Baseball yeah. pennant flag, right? So like the top of the, the flag would be the uh, red ERI, and then the bottom would be coming in with the green ERI, and, and that's what we call a, a pennant. You know, now to the naked eye, you might not 
see that. But for someone like me experienced, I'd, I'd say that's a potential bullish pennant that's happening. <laughs> yes. and, and then I would look for it to um, maybe potentially go up to 80. I mean, the there's a mathematical thing here that you look for, for potentially how far the market is going to go when it breaks a pattern like that, you know? And in this type of movement, if it takes out some highs, it could potentially test the highs from August. So it just could potentially just move really strong um, as the other different um, chart overlays come to fruition. So you you want to keep your eye on that. Hmm. And I think what what this is showing me is that the Q coin token is getting used a lot for uh, there, there there's most likely a discount just like Binance coin gives you a discount on trading fees so that could be why people are utilizing the Q coin to go in on things so it's a good pair to watch guys so with this we could say KCS okay, so here's some other ones Look, yeah, if you just do on your crypto pair screener, if you have a Qcoin account, then just do KCS and just kind of see which ones are ranking those technicals. Look at this guy. Now, well, well, I just wanted to point out, I'm glad you did that, but I also wanted to just point out, if you notice like where the volatility index is, and if you notice the positioning oh. of the TSI. So, so yeah, the radar can be green, the market can be trending, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it may be the best time to get in, or it may be a more highly um, risk positioning, which maybe you might not want to come in as with much of an allocation. You would, in this case point, maybe want to come in with less rather than more because of the positioning of the TSI and the positioning of the vo uh, volatility index. It's not in that sweet comfort zone where it gives you nice little warm fuzzy feelings. Like when you go back and you look at the the UNI, that just triggered that URI. So once you get that URI that comes in, if you look, right, and if you look at the TSI, that's your first dot on the TSI. Yeah. So you got much more odds in your favor, maybe to get like two or three dots on that TSI, and then maybe it, it keep going and follow through. Then so much on the other chart. And I'm not saying that the other market couldn't go because when money flow goes, money flow goes into the, the whole sector. It, it's like if you can imagine, you know, the ocean, it's a hurricane and it just fills up the whole bay and, and you know, right. with, with water. So it, it's the same case point. Well, I think that's a good point. And we are at a one day chart. So you could also realize that it's it's not something that you're going to set it and forget it you know if you do get in then maybe you get in and you set your cell for something in the near future with <laughs> great expectations but on that last one we just had that shows that there's it was the links i think the good point that's a ceiling guys that's exactly what I was, this is why I was saying earlier on those Bitcoin and Ethereum charts, why I'm so excited that Bitcoin and Ethereum is down here in the red zone. So just for kicks and giggles, let's go and say from this point, when this coin was this low on the volatility index, let's just take our measuring tape here and figure out how much, uh, I can't get past that. Uh, sometimes that little doodad drives me bananas. Okay, one second, guys. Let me tighten this up so I can actually use this to see when something is that low in volatility and, and the volatility, and it does grow. So in 45 days, this particular coin, when it was down in the volatility index, it was not at a two like Bitcoin is right now, but it was below the 20 line. It went up 59% in 45 days. So my point is, is that when Bitcoin and Ethereum get out of that zone, you've got to watch out. <laughs> and so even though now is not like a really exciting acquisition time of those two assets, it, it could be very exciting 
in the future. And, you know, unfortunately, 60 days is 60 days. It's not like um, instant instant gratification, but that's pretty good numbers. I take 59%. How about you, Joe? I think that that's uh, incredible. And I take uh, 59% any day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> or I weekend. Mean, <laughs> yeah, so just like those indicators are phenomenal. It's just you got to pick which ones you want to focus on. So, well, oops. you know, I just wanted to say the idea is, is that each one of these chart overlays are doing a specific type of mathematics, right? And everything is all cycle base orientated. So, you know, even with, you need to have more than one way to determine the potential market cycle direction because the market is elusive. And when I say elusive, I mean that there's so many people in here, this is a zero sum game that are trying to determine which way the market is going and you need to have an advantage in order to navigate and to survive and not fall victim uh, to the robots and to the whales. So I thought this would be a good example of when to jump out. <laughs> Look at this one. Yeah, that's nice. So, <laughs> Right there, TSI. You see that, guys? This is like, so it's when to get in and when to get out. So you have the first TSI. Actually, Joe, I'll let you explain it. I think this is this one is going to show you so many things. I wish I could un unmute one of this, the attendees today so they can explain why would this be a good time to take profit. Well, you know, it's not only do we have in there the uh, – the TSI, which is showing the uh, the red green, but what hasn't happened yet? Uh, one thing in particular is that we have the market uh, testing the upper kelter. So, you know, like Susie, if you were to put like a number one and put an arrow right there, and let's just say if I were just counting here, um, a good a great example, and we'll create one of when to get out of a trade, and this will work out good for for everyone who's starting off, you know? So you put there, number one is gonna be market price failing at the upper Kelcher band or K band. Okay. All right, number two is gonna be uh, it's on the trend indicator, when the green paint stops, if the green paint stops, that's going to be another great reason to get out. Okay. Now, we already have three right now. So you got, like, as far as the red dot on the TSI, you, you can put um, showing red dot on the TSI for number three. And this is what's so cool about, you know, just, how everything just works in harmony with the market price, whereas that once you master the rules on how to enter into the market, now you can apply, you know, same rules and master the exit of the market. And then you're truly, okay, um, have, you know, manifested crypto, uh, crypto mastery. Exactly, and number of fives are volatility. That's a great idea, Susie. I'm glad you saw. I'm glad you thought of that. Volatility and oversold zone. Mm-hmm. All right, so I told overbought when it's up at the top. I'm overbought. Sorry, I I, I guess get this. I'm I'm thinking the right thing. I'm saying the wrong thing. Sorry, guys. Well, that one there always used to stumble me too. Um, when I was first starting off and in there um so it's okay you know well, we just keep improving and keep improving and keep improving and then you know we evolve like a like a butterfly in a cocoon a caterpillar in a cocoon exactly so here's the thing on the trend 
guys, we really don't see the green color change here yet, but it'll happen eventually. I mean, and even the average true range has it switched. Well, remember, the average true range is going to be last, but what you want to do is, is put waiting for green paint stop. Just put the waiting there. And and with that being said, I would say, you know, Joe says a lot of times, you guys, scale in and scale out. So you'll notice, like, seasoned traders are not all in and all out. They'll, they'll leave a little bit of a, a little bit of food still grilling on the grill. You know, you always put the last piece of meat on and let it sizzle for a little bit or something. I'm just trying to say it's like a little bit of a hold back in just in case it may break out and do some anomaly that's not normal. But you you have, you know, technically the, you're, you're waiting on the signal line too. I would say this one, waiting, um, that guy. You're waiting on the signal line to close and, and go red. So, there could be some more activity on this one, but in general, I wanted to make sure you guys know how to get you know, to see the signs of when it's time to just take profit. All right. You guys, any any questions so far? All right. KS said something. He says, keep in mind, KCS is Qcoin's own fiat exchange token, probably okay to trade but would not stay in it for long. In case FTX contagion spills over to Qcoin despite their statements of non-involvement with FTX. Good point, Chaos. Also, would need to watch KCS USDT or KCS USD to make sure any realized gains in trading KCS or UNI or other tokens is not a phantom gain. Since KCS is not a stable coin, not pegged to USD, Example, if KCS's value plummets compared to USD, any perceived gains trading UNI, KCS, et cetera, may or may not be real gains when converted to a stable or USD. Yeah, that's a good point. Because it is, it is a, yeah, let, let's do that. Let's look at um, USD, KCS. Oh, that was KS. Yeah, no, wait. We want to change that. You put USD, KCS. A very good point. Wow. It, it must be US, um, KCS, USDT. I'm going to, sorry, guys. USDT, KCS. Wow. Well, let's just see what KCS has pairs with. Here we go. Okay, so it's definitely not a stable coin. And KCS's worth is 665. So in general, KCS is going down. So he has a good point. Which would make sense is, you know, if people are getting out of KCS and they're spending KCS on uni. I mean, here's the thing. You use the pair to get in, but when you sell, it doesn't mean you have to sell for what you bought it with. So then you would want to find, like, if you're, if you're utilizing your KCS coin to buy uni, when you go to take profit on uni, you want to jump into something else. So with that being said, Joe, what would you pick your next payer for? So if they're jumping in from one altcoin to the other altcoin, then you would need to do this. You would have to say, well, what could you buy uni with? Well, I mean, look, there's um, a couple of things with that, okay? There's a fine line between um, when we're utilizing the tools and we're looking for different setups, mathematical cycles, uh, versus when we cross that line and then we're looking at fundamental information. 
the, the markets are dangerous right now. There's things that are happening in here with this FTX and then now this whole new way that they want brokerages to validate their underlying uh, net worth. These are things that are in transition that are now coming to light. And, and until all this comes to light, this is going to be a, a dangerous environment, kind of like uh, navigating to a storm. And, and we're on a raft. And there's waves 10 and, and 12 feet. And um, so, yes, um, they're very good valid points and they're fundamental um, points. And it's important to balance both of them, both the points, the fundamental with the tools, you know, so that you can kind of have a balance of of the two. But for right now, the markets are really in this really big range. So it's really important to take profits because there's nothing right now that you really want to get into and say, hey, let me hold this for the next uh, year or two years. Until we start to see that potential big bottom uh, come into place, the one that we're all looking for right now, which um, is, is close. I mean, there's different uh, capitulation cycles that are showing in here for January and February, um, which is going to be um, a great year for us. Uh, but right now in the interim, the best is, is to tra play the trading range and do your homework with the uh, brokerage that you're with and with the coins that you invest in. And that way there, you've done your own due diligence. And even so, with that due diligence you do, just keep in mind that there still can, can be the other additional factors that may come into place um, right now until this environment gets regulated. So even though you can have everything set up right, um, there could be more companies that overnight we hear that go out of business. And we just want to try to make sure that we're um, uh, astute about how we keep our equity and our coins on possible cold storage while it's so that we don't have all of our coins sitting in a brokerage. And then if potentially that brokerage went out of business, all right, then you could possibly lose everything. And that's how dangerous this game is right now. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's so many things that are popping up that linked to the FTX debacle. I wanted to bring up, guys, last week we had put Ethereum link on there. And I say that because we found the pair where, where is Ethereum going, right? When all this money comes out of Ethereum, where is it moving to? So people are using Ethereum to buy Link. And this was something that we found last week. And I thought, wow, look at this. For the last eight days, it went up 26%. And if you're trading on a one-day chart, guess what it's time for? Profit taking, all right? So we're in the ceiling right here on the TSI. The signal line, you know, that's still wide. So there could still be some more juice in this lemon. I'm not, I shouldn't say lemon, but there's, there could be something else <laughs> left. So scaling. But also you have, you're in the um, overbought zone. So you're in that ceiling zone and you heal, you see a little bend in there and it's like, ooh, which way is it going to go? So if you've got profit, consider this is your moment in time. All right. Because what comes up comes down. Let's just look at history. Let's squeeze the chart up a little bit. When we get up to that top, what happens? It's just like a bouncy ball. When it goes to the ceiling, it hits down, up, down. So. Uh, depending on your stamina and your your need for profit ASAP, then this is your moment in time. So I thought maybe we'll go through these really quick and see what ones are ready. Wow. Wow. You you called this. So this was what we did last week. Okay. So let's just look at this one in a closer view. We put this line in here and we said, guys, if with that ATR is going to change, it's going to have to pass right here. So bam. That ATR changed, and let's just see kind of what happened since we were here last. So, oh my goodness, imagine if someone had put a sell rate right there, they would have made 100% on CeeLo. Oh, can you believe that, Joe? Oh my gosh, you found that one last week. 
<laughs> That's incredible. Look at that candlestick. I'm going to take this off, guys, so you can see. I'll put a line here. So since we last met, so today is Tuesday the 29th. So take seven days away. So that was the Tuesday the 22nd. So right here, we located this. We put the check mark right there. And from that day, from Tuesday to right there, 100%. Wow, in six days. How exciting. How exciting. So if you had a sell order in there, it would have popped. Amazing. <laughs> oh, it makes you want to not go to bed ever. You know what I mean? Like, But also, I think that solidifies the fact that you've got to just set, you know, when you when you buy it set it to sell at an awesome place wow all right anything you want to say about this joe good find um look what i'd like to say is is, is that this just shows uh how well the tools work and how uh someone that doesn't have any type of experience um they can start with these tools and they can become successful and what you'll notice is repetition and what we've been showing and teaching over the last 30 days has come to fruition. You know, we had first, if we talk about how the success came, if you look over here on starting right there, Susie, first we were, we were able to get the volatility index showing the first clue down there at the 20. Second, uh, we were waiting for the cross of the signal line. Uh, third, we have the TSI, which is giving the green. And, and I remember we were waiting for that bell alert. And when that bell alert come in, you know, she went all the way. And, um, you know, not every trade is going to be like this, but this is what the winning trades look like. And once you get a taste and you know how winning is, um, you're not going to want to let go of it because, you know, you're not going to want to make decisions unless they're, um, educated decisions whereas you're using the technology to help guide you because everything is all cycle orientated and it's timing and and you notice susie how when the market um uh, um uh, capitulated as soon as it put that high in look how quick it came back down and I that's know, what we were talking way. about before you know so you look on the chart and you're like wow this thing just went like 300%, you know, 200%, and, and uh, yeah, it did. But at the same time, if you didn't have your order out there or if you weren't um, have your alert set, then, you know, you may have not been able to get out of it up there at the high. Not, not to say you didn't make money, but you wouldn't have been able to maximize the opportunity that the crypto mastery tools have given you. Yeah, that that's just phenomenal so if this then that i mean i gotta say like that was phenomenal so guys that just so you know that was on qcoin people were spending bitcoin on celo and went pretty high for a short while but if you had already put in a sell order to sell at a higher level then you would have taken profit i wonder if anybody did that last week that would be awesome Nobody's commenting. <laughs> That's okay. This is a good time to learn, guys, because you learn now, and then later, when it's when it's the right time for you, you'll get there. Let's check out the next one. So that was using Bitcoin to buy CeeLo, and now let's see what happened with Tether. So, wow, the, the Tether one shows that it went up too, and they're all in the same situation right now. But look, the early reversal came in, totally understandable with 100% profit that some people would have had probably makes sense but both of those did upswing and that um, average tree range did switch okay let's look for the now this one is USD you using USD to buy CeeLo on Binance US and that did go into the oversold zone and again we're on a one-day chart guys so key came in the bell and then everything switched. So we'll see if it stays in the average tree range up or not, but the single line is still wide. The volatility index rose to a 55 
and look how much that changes. And remember guys, these candlesticks change in color. So if you're quickly going through that market, you want to, if you're in acquisition mode, then you want to look for those red candlesticks up in the early reversal and average true range charts because that's super rock bottom. You know, is this the right time to buy? Not for me. I don't like to buy on uh, black candlesticks. <laughs> black Friday though, right? <laughs> but I like to buy on red, red days. I like to buy in the red and sell in the green. So that's the idea. So let's look at EOS BTC and see what the outcome of that was. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's, I'm just gonna mark last Tuesday. So this is when we found it. And the early reversal had come in. And we didn't have a TSI last Tuesday, Joe. We had a three. And the signal line was still going. It was out of the volatility index. And let's see what it went to. Wow, look at that little candlestick right there. It went as high as this. I can't get the right thing, but about 11% in three days. And then it corrected itself. And let's say if someone would have held it and, and did it by, let's see what that was. So 3% in seven days, but if they would have set a sell order, then it would have gotten some good percentages. And then the TSI is now printing red. So let's take profit. So Go to show you people are selling their EOS, they took profit and now they're moving on. Okay, here's Bitcoin chain link. So here is this was Tuesday, last Tuesday, when we put this on our watch list. And it was because the early reversal came in. And then the key, so this was Tuesday, and then Wednesday the key came in. And and we had marked this right here, right here saying it needed to move past a certain point to get to the average true range. It looks like it did. And the average true range came in on Friday, it switched. Let's see where we were. So, well, let's go down here for where the uh, early reversal came in. I can't see if that's right. So about 28% in eight days. Good job, Joe. You want to pat yourself awesome. on the back? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you deserve an award for that find. Um, you know, this is our first time on basically checking our homework. Uh, you get 100 on your test. That's awesome. Eight days, 28%. <laughs> oh, it's your funny. indicators are amazing. <laughs> but just for the audience yeah. i want you guys to know this doesn't mean to just like sit there and look at it and we're past the one hour mark so we got to jump off this means it's time to take profit hopefully everybody sees we're clearly at a ceiling here um even though the signal line says that hey there's still some stuff going in there but the volatility index is at a dangerous high point and so if you don't take profit this is my personal Susie quote or crypto girl Anybody, any trader, I would say, would say this. If you don't take profit now, someone else is going to take it for you. That's my five years analysis of this market. So you got anything to say to close for today, Joe? Uh, no, I mean, uh, with over our winning trades and winning setups, and um, I'm always thankful. Um, behind the scenes, you guys don't know that um, everyone's working 100%. We're all a team here. Um, we got Myrene, um, Brett, um, Susie, myself, um, and we're here to offer you the best support uh, once you get the product. So it, it, it's not as maybe intimidating as maybe one may think. These are easy rules, um, and these are tools that um, I've created in here throughout the years. The most easiest way is to simplify processing the information. You know, that one of the questions that I always get asked is that, you know, uh, what does it take to be a good trader? And I always tell them you have to understand uh, the market cycle. And once you understand the market cycle, uh, when is the right time to get in? When is the right time to get out? You have uh, already beaten 90% of the odds um, 
that are against you because the average trader that may be moving off of FOMO news or the traders that do not have these tools, they're not able to see the distinguishing colors between green, uh, between red, um, the positioning of the volatility index being at an extreme, whereas that, you know, we have to take fast action versus the volatility action being overbroad and things may not be the right timing, this market may have exhausted itself. So, um, it's always a pleasure to spend time with everyone and review these trades and we look forward to uh, in the future um, hearing from more reviews, uh, just some of the success that you've been having here and also what you've been learning, okay? Because I know, um, you know, uh, uh, things are new, but as things evolve in here, we're coming into a new year and we want everyone to have a great uh, new year with great success. Thank you all. Have a great weekend and keep your trades going. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.